So good morning and happy new year. Thank you so much for joining me for New Year Nourished You. And over the next 10 days, we're going to be diving into 10 different topics. Each day is going to have one particular topic. However, because I have such a holistic approach to health and life in general, there are chances that we're going to be dabbling in multiple topics. They're all going to weave together. You'll see how one is very much linked to others. Um, and that's why I have such an emphasis on holistic health, because it really can be that full picture where we can't focus on one thing without impacting another. And that's the beauty of it, because when we change just one thing, it ripples into other areas of our life and then it really benefits really holistically. So good morning, Melanie. Thank you for joining us as well. Great to see you. I was just saying to the other ladies, if you want to interact at any point, um, just pop anything in the chat or do the um, hand up reaction and we can, yeah, we can all interact. I love engaging with all of you and it's so great to have you here. We've got Kat joining us as well. Good morning, Kat. I love it. Well done, early birds. So before we get into today's topic, which is the about nutritious food and nourishing food, we are going to do a little bit of like logistics and I'm just going to outline a few things. And one thing I always say to people when they join this challenge or any of my free trainings or free events is please treat it like something you have paid for because we value what we pay for. And unfortunately, there's so many incredible free things out there on the internet. And I'm guilty of this too, where I sign up for things and then I never look at them or I never listen to them or I never read them or whatever the context is. So please treat this as something that you have paid for and show up to this like something that you have paid for because you will value it more. And I promise you, if you value this and you give this the time and those of you that are here today, you're showing that you value it and you're showing up and those that are listening on the replay or watching the video later, you are also valuing that because you're taking that time but keep showing up for yourself, right? Because I'm not here to waste your time. You're not here to waste your time. I want to make this valuable. And I always put so much into my trainings, whether they're the free trainings or the paid trainings, because I really want to serve. And that was one of the main things I want to get from this 10 days is really showing up and serve and supporting those of you that are choosing to learn from me and trusting me. I always like feel so grateful for that and so honored. So I don't take your time for granted. And I'd really love for you to really value and really take action on what we're learning as well. So really absorb it and allow yourself to get the most out of this 10 days together. Another thing I will outline, uh, outline is, as Steph knows, <laughs> she was here for the last one, I love to talk. So I used to say these calls would be 10 to 15 minutes. Now I've said they'll probably be 15 to 30 because that feels more realistic. Some days they'll be shorter. Some days they might be closer to the 30 minutes. If at any point you have to leave because you have somewhere you need to be or you've got to start work or you want to get a workout in before work or anything like that, I won't be offended. I don't take it personally. I know we all have lives and we need to come and go and you can always listen to the replay if that's the case. Obviously, if you can stay for the whole thing, amazing. I love that and I love getting to chat and engage and like if there's any questions at the end, we can go through those as well. Um, but please know that, um, yeah, there's kind of, that's the time frame. And if you need to be somewhere else, that's totally fine too. Then there's also going to be replay sent out to you every day. So if at any point you're like, oh, okay, that was a good one. I want to go back over and listen to that. Or I really want to absorb more of that. Or I didn't quite understand that. I'm going to listen to it again. And then I'll bring a question to the next day. You're absolutely welcome to do that. And there is going to be an action step for every day. And there's just going to be one simple action step. Some days like today, there'll be a few journal prompts. Other days, it might just be one little quick thing you do. Some days it might be a little bit longer, but I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible because it's great to know things, but until we put that knowledge into action, it's not actually serving us, right? We can know all of the things in the world and know what's good for us, know what's going to help our health, know what's going to make us happy. But until we actually take the action and do the thing, we're not going to get the benefits and the transformation of that knowledge. So I highly recommend doing that simple action step in a way that feels most aligned for you and like I said, I'm going to make it as simple as possible because I know we all lead busy lives. So yeah, just really trying to lean into those actions um, and taking the content. And if you're like, oh, that bit really resonated with me. This feels like something I need to do today. If you find an action step that feels more aligned for you, perfect. Take it and run with that as well. So I fully back all of you and trust all of you to know what's best for you. And when it comes to health, it is a very individual picture. Yes, there's a lot I'm going to be sharing with you. And yes, there's lots of general stuff I can share. But ultimately, we know ourselves best. And it's really important on this health journey to cultivate that relationship with ourselves and learn to trust ourselves and know what's good for us.
And speaking of actions, I know that a big part of what I do and teach is mindset. And I know a lot of the time we do know what to do, but we can't actually put it into action or we find ourselves self-sabotaging or there's things getting in our way. Maybe we're procrastinating. Maybe we're just so busy with everything else. So I will be talking a lot about that mindset side of things as well. And I want you to know if there is something that you are unable to do, know that the chances are is it's your body trying to protect you. So for example, if you are procrastinating on an action step and it's like, why it's so simple, why can't I do this today? Rather than beating yourself up, rather than going to that place where so many of us just habitually go to being like, oh, I'm not doing a good enough job. I need to do better. I need to do more. Instead of going there, practice kindness, practice compassion, realize that it's just your body trying to protect you. And it's like, oh, okay, that might actually feel scary for me. It might seem like a simple action step, but why is this actually feeling scary? And just get curious and be kind to yourself. Pretend, I like to say, like when it comes to our subconscious as well, I like to say, pretend you're dealing with a seven-year-old child, right? Would you be mean to that child and be like, why can't you just do this thing? Like, you're so awful at this. Like, you're never doing what you say you'll do, all this kind of stuff. We wouldn't really say that to them, would we? Hopefully not. So how would we treat them and treat ourselves like that? Treat ourselves like our own best friend. Treat ourselves with kindness and compassion. And there's going to be a whole day on self-love. It's the last day, a beautiful way to wrap it up. But ultimately, I really want self-love and self-kindness to underpin everything we do here, because my goal is to help more people come at health from a place of love, because I know and it serves us because it gets us here. But sometimes we come to health and wellness. And if it's like if weight release is one of our goals or wanting to change the way we look is one of our goals, sometimes it comes from that place of I need to change, not because I love myself. And that's okay because like I said, it's serving us to get us here. But if then we can have that goal and be like, cool, I actually want this because I love myself and I know I deserve that thing because you're allowed to want all those goals. You're allowed to want to release weight. You're allowed to want to whatever it is that you desire. You're allowed to want that. And I know there's like lots of things out there where it's kind of like, oh, we shouldn't want to change that because then it's saying we're not good enough. And there's like that kind of thread of self-love. However, I'm very like grounded and balanced in the way it's like, if you desire something, we can want that from a loving place. We can want that because we know it's better for our health, because we know it's going to make us feel better. And we know it's ultimately what's better for us. So whatever your goal is, whatever your desire from this 10 days. And I loved reading through your intros. I'll be replying to those today. So thank you for those that have shared and anyone who hasn't yet, please hop in there, um, introduce yourself and let me know what you'd love to gain from this 10 days together. But really just be kind to yourself throughout this 10 days. And you'll hear me grain it into you over the 10 days. So hopefully I can cut through some of that mental chatter and inner critic that we all have and know that that part is always just trying to protect you. So even if all you do is show up or even if all you do is listen to it, that that's still a win. So even if we can't manage to do that simple action step for the day, that's okay too. So there is no right or wrong here. It's all about that kindness. It's all about showing up for yourself. And it's all about choosing again and again, because in every moment we have a choice of what we want to do. And we don't have to make that mean anything about us. It doesn't mean that we're bad if we didn't do something. It doesn't mean if we're good, if we did do something, it's all just data. And if we can stop internalizing everything and making it so personal, it makes this whole journey so much easier. All right, so that's my little spiel to kind of like set the context and like the underlying theme. I really would love if you get anything from this whole challenge, the whole 10 days is just to be a little bit kinder to yourself because wait and see how that can change your life. And I know I've gotten my own inner critic. We've all got our own inner critics and they can be really like persistent. And that's okay. Like I said, they're trying to protect us. So if we can just make that little shift where we stop buying into the little criticisms that they're whispering in our ear, then that will completely change the trajectory of our life because we'll believe in ourselves more. And the more that we believe in ourselves, the more that is possible for us. Anything is really possible when you believe in yourself. And this is from a scientific and like working with the subconscious quite literally what we believe becomes our reality so when we work on that belief level particularly self-belief because then if we believe in ourselves and we believe anything is possible we create that so when we're working with those beliefs it's really really powerful stuff beliefs and identity and I'm sure I'll touch on those things throughout but there's lots I want to touch on on the 10 days which brings me to today's content let's talk about nutritious food So food, I really feel that food is a beautiful form of self-respect and nurturing and nourishing our body. 
And when we can really nourish our body from that place, it completely changes the dynamic of how we approach food. Because if we're approaching food because we have to eat well, because that's what we know is going to be good for us. And it feels like a chore and, oh my goodness, I've got to cook again. This is the third time today. Why do I have to eat three times? Or gosh, I just always have to think of new meals and this is getting exhausting. When we're approaching it from that side, it feels so draining. I don't want to cook when I'm thinking of it like that. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. That feels like a lot of effort. Whereas if we flip it and we look at food as like, wow, I get to give this gift to myself. I get to nourish my body and give it these nutrients that are then going into different biochemical pathways and they're going to help me thrive. They're going to help me feel so much better. They're going to help me have more energy. They're going to help me sleep better. They're going to help me feel more confident because I'm feeling more energized and I've got better mental clarity and I can think better it ripples into all other areas. So when we first of all reframe the way we look at eating nutritious food and really approach it as that gift to ourselves, as that form of self-respect, not berating us in those ourselves in those times that we're unable to choose the real food option or the nutritious food option. And I'll speak a little bit more about what that is. But today I really want to focus on our relationship with food, because like I said earlier, we can have all the knowledge when it comes to what to do for our health, but until we can actually act on it, it's a different story. And this can often be the case, right? And I know if you're following me, chances are, you know, that I speak about real food till the cows come home. And it really is a simple premise. It's like real food. What does that look like? It's all those whole foods that nature provides us with. It's things like good quality meat, fish, dairy, if you choose to eat those things. If not, then it's seasonal vegetables. It's fruit and veg. And this should be whether or not you choose to eat meat. You should be eating these things as well. I should also preface. Um, So lots of seasonal vegetables, lots of seasonal fruits, herbs, spices, nuts, seeds, legumes. So things like beans, lentils, pulses, all that kind of stuff as well. Am I missing anything? But all those kinds of things, right? That is real food. And we can get products made up of real food, or we can get products that have been synthesized in the lab or have many ingredients that are just unrecognizable because they've been so processed. So the more we can lean towards those whole foods, the better it's going to be for us because that's the way that our body was designed to eat. Our body wasn't designed to eat lots of processed food and the kinds of things that we are used to eating these days, unfortunately. And that's the way that society has gone. But now it's our job and our responsibility and an honor that we get to work back towards eating more real food. And it does get to be simple. And when we just focus on eating more real food and knowing that it tastes delicious, because I honestly believe if anybody tells you that eating healthy, nutritious meals is boring or bland, they're not doing it right. We do not want to be eating like plain lettuce or just chicken and broccoli every day or whatever things you see sometimes that people are eating. And that's okay. That's their path. And there's no judgment there. But if you really want to enjoy it and you want to get that variety, which is so important to get the variety of nutrients within the food and the variety for our gut health as well, we want to focus on making it the things taste good. And when it comes to habit creation, the more we can enjoy what we're doing, the more likely we are to stick to it. So if we are making these nutritious meals really tasty, of course, we're more likely to want to eat them. It's just like what I was saying about that perspective shift around food before as well. So if I'm feeling like eating healthy is a chore, I'm not going to want to do it because it feels difficult, doesn't feel enjoyable, doesn't feel as satisfying. Whereas if I'm thinking of it as a gift and I'm like, yeah, that feels really enjoyable, that feels really loving and nurturing, that's more appealing. Same with the taste of our real food meals. The better we can make them taste and the more we can learn to enjoy them. And this means experimenting and finding ways that you enjoy eating that real food and finding different combinations of real foods and playing around with different dressings and sauces and spices and herbs and all these flavors and things that we are gifted from nature, the more we will enjoy it and the more likely we are to keep showing up and making those nutritious meals. So really looking at that and just thinking, okay, what am I currently eating? And how does that look when it comes to real food? And remember, everything here is judgment free. So if right now you're eating lots of processed food, that is okay. And I actually see that as a beautiful opportunity because it's like, awesome, how good are you going to feel the more real food you eat? So if you're already on that path of eating lots of real food, amazing, celebrating you. And if you are just starting out on eating real food, then also celebrating you because wherever you are on that journey, that's perfect. And the more you can move towards that real food and you don't have to be perfect overnight and we never have to be perfect, in fact, and 
part of my teaching is like restriction free and this will come more into our relationship with food in a moment um but it's like if we restrict ourselves we can send ourselves into the binge restrict cycle so this doesn't mean cool i'm not restricting myself i can eat donuts for days and that's all i'm going to eat because that's ultimately not real food we're not going to feel very good you can try it like try eating donuts for a few days and see how you feel you're going to feel pretty bad and then you're going to realize and you're going to be like all right cool let's bring in some nice real food and those whole foods i see what shana was talking about now i'm not feeling so great after all these donuts however if we do love donuts and we decide we want to have a donut once every so often amongst all the real food perfect because we're not restricting ourselves and if we restrict and we are like no I can't eat that food then what happens eventually is we often have a bit of determination willpower motivation and it lasts a little while right we might get like a week in or two weeks in and be like yes I haven't eaten anything refined or processed or any sugar or whatever the thing that we're restricting ourselves from and then what happens is we can kind of like that can all go to the wayside and then we end up binging it. So I call this the binge restrict cycle. And it happens, I see a lot is like, let's say at home, you're like, okay, I'm not allowed to eat any of these foods and notice the languaging I intentionally used not allowed to, because these are the rules we kind of have around food sometimes, right? So I'm not allowed to eat any of these kinds of foods. I'm only eating real food. I'm only eating clean. I say that in quotation marks because hopefully all our food is clean. <laughs> we should be washing that fruit and veggies. <laughs> Even if we don't, though, dirt is actually quite nutritious. Not saying to go eat dirt, but there is um, good microflora and stuff in the dirt when it's good quality soil. This is a whole other spill. We're not going to go down that tangent today. But you know what I mean? I don't like that label clean eating because it's like, what is clean eating? Like, that's just not even how you can deal with clean eating. So it's another one of those kind of diet culture terms. And it's like, if we can just eat more whole food, more real food, it doesn't have to be clean, doesn't have to be dirty, whatever the labels we're giving it. It's like, is it a real food? Yep. Awesome. More of this in our diet. Isn't it a real food? No. Okay. That's a sometimes thing. But what I was saying was sometimes we go, okay, it's not allowed in the home. I'm going off all of that kind of stuff. And then what happens is we'll go to a party and all of that stuff's in front of us. And we're like, oh, well, I'm at a party. You know, I don't allow myself at home. So today I'm going crazy. I'm going to eat as much as I want and I'm just going to enjoy. And that's okay. But do you notice how it's such a contrast gone from not eating at all to then ending up binging it because you're like, well, this is my one opportunity. All this happens when we jump on and off diets because we're like, all right, on Monday, I'm starting this new diet. And until then I get to eat anything I want. And we end up eating so much more than we would have if we just had of like not restricted ourselves in the first place. Who can relate to that? I've been in that when I was back, my back and forth yo-yo dieting back in the day. And it's not a nice place to be. You feel like trapped. You feel like, oh my, goodness I feel like food's controlling me yeah and then we try and go the other extreme and we're like all right well I'll control food and I'll be like yeah I'm only going to eat clean and then we feel in control for a bit and we feel good and we like are like um celebrating ourselves because we're doing so well we're eating so clean and then we stop that we might eat something else and then we start being so hard on ourselves so not only is it having that impact on the binge restrict cycle, but it's also we're making it mean something about us. And we're making it mean like, oh, when I'm eating only real food, I'm I'm being so good. Like how often have we referred to when we're dieting? It's like, oh, I'm being really good with my food right now. See how we're making it like about us and we're making it like, oh, I'm good if I eat well and I'm bad if I'm eating bad. It's like, oh, I've been bad this weekend. Oh, I've been really bad over Christmas. And I say this not with judgment. So if you've been saying this, I hear this all the time and I've said it too. And I'm this is the reason I'm able to say it because I've been there. Um, but it's all about unconditioning ourselves from all of these kind of rules we've put up on ourselves. And this is one of the first things I want you to look at for today. What kind of rules are you setting yourself around food? Are there things like, okay, no carbs after 3 p.m.? Um, I fast until 10 a.m., not allowed to eat before 10 a.m. Um, and I, when I said I, that was a rule. That's not actually what I do. I don't recommend fasting, especially for women. Um, but again, another tangent. There's so many things I could talk about and we're approaching my 30 minute limit that I've set myself. So just starting to familiarize yourself and notice throughout the day, what rules are you telling yourself? Like, oh no, I can't have um, this particular food because 
I haven't eaten my veggies. Maybe that's one of the rules that's been ingrained from childhood. It's like, if you don't eat your main meal, you don't eat your veggies, you don't get dessert. Just looking at any and every rule. Some of them might be serving us. Some of them might be not serving us. And we're not judging the rules. We're just looking at like how many rules and limitations have we placed for ourselves around food and just becoming aware of it right? We don't have to change them today. We don't have to change them all in one day. Just starting to become aware of those food rules you're setting yourself and looking at this relationship we have with food. Now, the relationship we have with food, I always say it actually does come back a lot to our relationship with our body and our relationship with ourselves. And it might sound like if it's the first time you're ever hearing it, it might sound, that doesn't make sense. How does my relationship and how I treat food relate to myself? And you might have already started to catch on and what I was saying at the start of this call around like that, it's a form of self-respect. It's a gift to ourself. That's part of it, right? When we really deeply love ourselves and we're like, okay, I know I deserve this. It becomes easier to have these healthy habits. And that doesn't mean if we don't have those healthy habits right now, we hate ourselves or we're awful or we're being really mean to ourselves. That's not the case. But you'll see a correlation between the more that you love yourself and that you continue showing up for yourself, the more that you can make those choices that really nourish yourself. And wherever you are on this journey, remember, no judgment. So if right now you aren't eating well at all and you're like, oh, no, does that mean I hate myself? No, because you're showing up for you. You're here. You've tried different things. Even like though we can look at diets as not an effective way to release weight and that kind of stuff, it's not the healthiest thing to do for ourselves. It's still a way that you've tried showing up for yourself the best that you could, right? So always coming from like that place of the most generous interpretations and always coming from that place of like looking at what we've done in the past with love and being like, cool, I can see how I was trying to help myself there. So really just leaning into that and being like, all right, now I get to choose and I get to show up for myself in this way with food and food. It has a lot of different connotations. And like, so for example, what I was saying earlier around the control piece, if we feel out of control in our life, we can often try and control hyper control food because it's one thing we feel like we can control or the opposite. If we feel like our life is so controlled and fixed, then we can feel out of control with food and we can feel more like a slave to the food. And it's like, oh, well, the food's just got such a hold on me. And there's many variables here as well. So some of it is this kind of like, um, mindset perspective some of it is maybe we're just addicted to sugar because it's highly highly addictive right which is why it's so important to work holistically we can't just look at okay it's just we're addicted to sugar we've just got to quit the sugar um, and deal with the withdrawals and retrain our taste buds and that kind of stuff because then we're not addressing but is there an emotional cause to why we're always turning to sugar or why we felt the need to get addicted to sugar right because when it comes to emotional eating there's always an emotion under that and there's a whole day on emotional health so I'll speak more about the emotions but if you've done any of my emotional eating trainings or anything like that you'll know that the reason that we emotional eat is actually just to distract ourselves from a feeling that we are afraid of feeling and again there's no shame in that because it is literally just our body and mind trying to protect us because it feels oh that's a scary big feeling we don't want to feel that and we've also been like trained and ingrained by that you look at movies you see people going through a breakup eating a tub of ice cream it's just normal that we eat our feelings right so we get to do the work to undo that and look at our emotions and form that relationship with our emotions and we'll talk lots more about that in the emotional health day but that's another example or things like binge eating and that binge restrict cycle sometimes the reason we end up there is because our relationship with our body because we're trying to control the way our body looks or change the way our body looks so in order to control it we're like okay well I'll control what I eat because that's a variable that I do have to work with so it's see how it's so linked to like the mindset, the psychology of it, but it's also things like the blood sugar levels. It's also things like, how's your gut health? We're going to have different cravings based on the different gut microbiomes we have. So it's very, very linked. It could be hormonal related, so many different variables, but I promise you, the more you eat real food, the more all of this comes into balance. And this is my whole ethos around food. And that's why I continue to preach real food, because I really have seen that when we're actually eating the way that our body was designed, we are going to be helping all of those systems come back into balance and back into harmony. We don't have to focus on one particular system, because when we focus on all the systems, 
it will all come into play and it will all realign itself. And this is why I always say like whatever I'm helping someone with, whether it is a hormonal issue, whether it is a mental health kind of thing and we're wanting to work with the nutrition to support that, whether it is um, skin related, it always comes back to eating that real food because we can whatever system we're looking at, we can always trace that back to eating more real food. And obviously there's a lot more I could say about real food. And this is, I've got a whole six week course on it. There's that much I can say on it, but I'm just trying to give you this like really impactful information and simplify it for you because ultimately, yes, there's lots of nuances and yes, there's more ways that we can teach ourselves to have those healthy habits and things. But if you just always come back to real food, that's where the magic is. That's where we will find we thrive the most. So real food, focusing on that is like the overarching nutritious food, kind of like what we do under that category. And I know you've got your wheel of health. So if you haven't got that, you will have received it in your emails. Um, And basically this wheel of health is the 10 ingredients we're going through this 10 days. So today we've been talking about nutritious food. So it's real food. And we've been talking about our relationship with food. So when rating yourself on nutritious food today, I really want you to think about those two variables. Am I eating real food currently? Where am I currently sitting with that? Am I doing like lots of real food meals or am I only eating a little bit of real food and there's more processed stuff in there at the moment? That's one variable. And the second variable is your relationship to food. So when you're choosing that rating from zero to 10, Factor in both. Come up with one that feels good for you. Or if you can't, because it's like feeling a bit different, it's like, oh, I ate really what I would consider healthy, but my relationship to food I'm realizing actually is quite unhealthy because I'm really controlling that. And I notice if I do um, kind of go off the wagon, another term that it's like there is no wagon because it's a lifestyle. But if I do go off the wagon, then I notice that my relationship with food is actually haywire. So it's the eating the real food all the time is actually just a mask for something under here. So if you do feel that you need two kind of rating scales for those, just do two little dots um, or do like divide that column in half. Right. And then some people like to color it in. Some people like to do dots wherever their number is. But when you're doing this also remembering coming back to what I said about not judging yourself for where you are, if you judge yourself a two out of 10, that doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't mean you're doing bad. It's like, awesome. There's some great opportunity for growth here. How exciting. What a difference we're going to see. If you judge yourself 10 out of 10, awesome. Celebrate yourself. I'm always about celebrating yourself. Whether you are at that two, you're at that 10, you're somewhere in the middle at a five, anywhere in between. Celebrate yourself because you're here, you're showing up for you, and you have the opportunity to continue to choose and choose again. So they're the ratings that you're going to be doing today. And each day as we go through each ingredient, we're going to be doing a rating at zero to 10. And every day it's going to be that same thing, not judging ourselves, seeing it as data, seeing as, okay, which area is it most important for me to work in first? This is essentially what we're collecting here. And I'll talk more about what we can do with the wheel of health once we've brought our attention to where we are sitting on all of that. But for today, give yourself a rating for the nutritious food category And I'm going to give you some journal prompts so you can start to think about your relationship with food. And if, like I said, if the journaling feels a bit scary and you're like, oh, what's going to come out when I sit down and journal with my thoughts and start to look at my relationship with food, maybe just start to think about it today. Maybe just notice those food rules that we were talking about earlier. And that can be your action step. But I really want to encourage you to lean in. And if it does feel uncomfortable when you are sitting there and you're writing out all your relationship with food and the rules you have around that and like where you're kind of sitting with that, just breathe through it. And in the Emotional Health Day, I'll give you some more tools when it comes to our emotions and dealing with those. But we've all held big emotions in our life before, right? And it can feel scary. It can feel overwhelming. And our body and mind do not want us to go there. But ultimately they do because the suffering is in the resisting of those emotions. So if you're sitting there and you're like, wow, I'm actually feeling quite sad because my relationship food isn't in the best place right now. And yeah, I'm feeling sad about that. That's okay. If you want to have a cry, please do. I encourage tears, letting that release, letting it out and be there with yourself, loving yourself through the process. So that is our action task for today in classic Shana style. We're at 30 minutes, so we're going to wrap up here. Um, But I hope you've all gained a lot of value and had your eyes and mind opened to some new ways of looking at food and new ways to approach it. 
And remember, we're always coming back to kindness. And today, if you have the opportunity as a bonus thing, give yourself that gift of some real food throughout the day, right? Make those choices. Be like, oh, I see what Shana was saying today. Okay, how can I choose a really beautiful real food lunch? And if you've already prepared your lunch and it's not the case, that's okay too. Give yourself permission because remember that binge restrict cycle and we're starting to decondition ourselves from all of these rules, from all of that restriction, from all of the things that diet culture has sold us over the years. So thank you so much to those of you that have been here. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself or pop it in the chat. I'm open to answering any questions. If anyone has to go, you are more than welcome to, of course. So I'll see if anyone wants to say anything. I love seeing your faces in the morning. It's so nice. Beautiful. One other thing I will mention is um, in terms of these action steps, if you want to put any key takeaways in the Facebook group, every day in the Facebook group, group, group <laughs> in the group, I'm going to be putting the replay for today and then the action step as a separate comment. So if you want to interact with that, share any findings or just say, hey, I did that. Thanks for that. Or whatever it is. You don't have to reveal things if you don't want to. I always encourage it. And I I even have a whole episode about healing my relationship with food on my podcast, which I can also link you guys to, um, to show you that you're not alone and we've all been through this and wherever we are on our journey, it's all perfect and it's all unfolding in the way it's meant to be. Um, and it does get easier. The more we keep showing up for ourselves, the more we just make this a habit, it does get easier. So um, yeah, please do interact in that. There's going to be some amazing giveaways in this 10 days. So some of you have already been sharing and commenting and thank you for introing yourself and sharing it with friends and all that kind of stuff. And it's all been noted and you're going into the running for those giveaway prizes. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for showing up for yourselves. Thank you. Those of you that are here live, it's always such a pleasure. And for those that are watching the replay later on, thank you for tuning in. And I'm so excited to continue to share the next nine days with you. So Goodbye, have a beautiful day, and I'll speak to you all tomorrow. Thanks, Steph. See you tomorrow. You're welcome, Katrina. Thank you. Lovely seeing you. Bye, Melanie. Bye, Narelle. Thanks, Linda and Kat, for making it, and Juliana. So nice to see you all. Have a beautiful day.